In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the elements of evil palette by Sugar Drizzle. Any of my Halloween palettes or whatever going forward, especially because we are now getting into after Halloween, I will definitely be showing you how you can transition these to more seasonal. As you see, this look is more Christmassy, at least I tried with the red lip. Let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial real quick. Starting off, I'm just taking my Milani eyeshadow primer as per usual, just using a kind of domey brush to apply that. So taking this small size brush, I'm gonna be dipping in with our black, which is called Bat Wings. I'm just gonna be focusing on about the outer half of my eye. I'm gonna go ahead and grab just a slightly larger brush. I would call this like a medium size shading brush. And I'm gonna dip in with the shade Frankenstein. Just going to fill in the second half of the eye, so the inner part. One of the things I would say that I'm not super in love with about this palette is there is no shade between these two to blend. So we're basically just gonna have to either through stamping and buffing, we're gonna have to create our own custom shade. I am not gonna worry too much about what's on the eyelid because as you see, I do go in with some shimmers. We don't really have to worry about that too much. What we really have to worry about is this area here. It's gonna go back in with that Frankenstein. What shade am I gonna take? So this shade here, which is called Pickled Eyeballs, I'm gonna pack that just with my finger into the center of the lid. I'm gonna take Witch's Potion. I am gonna pack that on the outer corner of the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and take the shade Goblin Sanat, this yellowy, almost limey green shade. That is what I have in the inner corner. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the outer edge. I'm just gonna get myself caught up to the other side. I was already wearing mascara because I just got home from work, so I'm not gonna wear any mascara because I already have some on, so I hope y'all don't mind. I still think that showing you the techniques and all of that was really helpful, so let me get caught up and then we can go ahead and discuss this palette more. Okay, so just to start off with this palette, so this palette does retail for $52 dollars. This did come out, I believe, like right around Halloween. Literally talk about probably late, but again, I have no real idea. They didn't really talk about it. Um, the artwork on this palette is done by Doodles by the Bunny. I'm not 100% sure if she had also chosen like the colors and stuff like she had done with Gourmand Girls, but I do know that I was Super excited, especially seeing that she had done the artwork. But also, I mean, just look at this artwork. This is so, 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 so pretty. I'm super obsessed. I really do hope that they do some more collections. And I do hope that they are able to come out around, like, better times. I don't know. I do know that they had, like, their other one, I think was, like, a dragon palette or something that they, or, like, a mermaid or something palette that I did not pick up. I don't know if they were deciding to do that one first before Halloween or something, and this is just a random, I don't know. I just want to talk about this. If you are interested in it, I do think that it is definitely worth it. Let's go ahead and just delve into what I think about this palette. So, this palette does come with 12 shades so it definitely has a ton 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 of duochromes shimmers all of that so every single shade in this palette as far as i see is a duochrome or just super shimmery so i don't even know if you can see that as i just swatched it so beautiful so everything in this palette all the shades and everything work perfectly well it had zero bad experiences with this shade, at least in terms of formula. The only thing I will mention is I wish that there were more mattes. I wish that maybe a couple of the mattes were eliminated. And yeah, that's honestly mainly it. I think that this palette, and you'll see when I show you the tutorial, I had to, like the mattes that I use is just two shades, which is fine. 
but I kind of want to be able to have that option of a transition shade. I don't really like the fact that the only deep shade in this palette is just a matte black and then everything else you kind of just have to branch off from that. So the two main at least color stories I see when I look at this is basically orange. You can do kind of a orange kind of warm look or you have green. That at least is the main things I see. They do have like a lighter orange like peachy shade and they do have this more looks to me like a mintier shade. Those are perfectly fine, but in all honesty, I kind of feel like I didn't want them, if I'm honest. I feel like, as you see, even on this side, I did blend out the green, this Frankenstein shade with no extra product. I didn't use the Tilly shade. I didn't need anything to necessarily blend that out, and I still feel like it looked fine. I really do feel like this palette would have done better with changing the shades. Like, this could have been, like, a brown like a darker brown, like a warmer kind of brown. I do notice that really helps the transition from black to orange. And then same with this shade here. I really would have appreciated it if it was a deeper, richer green, again, just to help that transition from black to green. But just to go ahead and show you, I did a swatch just real quickly all of the shimmers and multi-crumbs and all of that. I don't really know if they are showing up correctly, so I do apologize, but I can definitely say that the quality of all of these is very nice. I'm talking Danessa Myrick's quality, so super, super good, especially this shade right here, which is Potion. Unfortunately, the flip is not <laughs> looking that obvious on camera, maybe a little bit. I really hope that it's coming through, but in real life, it is definitely there, and it is definitely pretty, and I mean, you can even just see. It is super gorgeous on the lids. I think mainly for me, my brain would more say, if you were looking at this palette, get this palette if you like the shimmers, if you like the duochromes. The mattes, again, are perfectly fine, but you could use other mattes. They're not like these are, I'm like, oh my god, you know, the best mattes in the world. Again, I mean, they're great, don't get me wrong, but I feel like buy this palette, especially because it's a little bit more pricey for, you know, the $52, buy it mainly for the shimmers. If you see shimmers in this palette that you absolutely love, definitely pick them up. Going along a little bit with that, when I have it swatched out, they don't all as much but one thing I did notice is I was doing a look the other day and I wanted it to look more of that kind of, I guess, basically how I have right now, but it just wasn't vibing for me. And I think I used this black, this green shade, the Witch's Brew, and then I don't know if I used this one, uh, Pickled Eyeballs or Goblin Snot, not really sure. But one thing that really kind of frustrated me is it... This so a lot of the shades have like a lot of warmth to it, so like pickled eyeballs, or even a goblin snot. Goblin snot more has that like goldish shade, and what kind of frustrated me with that is, I had done a makeup look previously like the day before for Halloween because I did use this palette for Halloween, and I'll insert a picture here if you're curious. I did I believe already posted on Instagram just like as a happy Halloween. But I did just use, you know, the black, the orange, and then I think this shade Elixir of Life, which is an orange shimmer. So, of course, I did that for Halloween, and then I was like, okay, it's the day after Halloween. I want to transition to no longer Halloween, and I'm really trying to utilize my palettes for, of course, not to be so Halloween-focused. And I was just disappointed when I put the black, and then I did that green shade, and then I did a little bit of inner corner, I think, with Goblin Snot and it just turned gold on me. And it was just kind of just a little disappointing. So just again, keep that in mind. I do have that on my inner corners now and I think it is looking perfectly fine. So it could have just been a weird uh, fluke. It could have been just how I did my shadow that day. I don't know, sometimes I'm sure we all have bad shadow games, but you know, basically just reiterating what I said. If you like the shimmers in this, definitely that should be your reasoning, in my opinion, to pick up this palette. I do feel like you will need to add other shades, like maybe transition shades between the green or the orange, or however you else you want to use these, because there are definitely dual crumbs in this that are, you know, go more like a berry shade. And I mean, sure, you could 
if you want to use from this palette, but it might be more fun to pull from other palettes, especially like one of the shades, sorry, and I'm talking so much, one of the shades here, Arsenic Wine, it looks a bit more lavender -y. I mean, you could definitely see this purpley shade, it looks more lavender-y. Tell me that would not look great with a purple or a lavender shade. So I am trying to think if there is anything else that I wanted to talk about with this. Oh, yeah, yeah. So things that I, and I still need to, like, finalize my list, and I forgot to email it to myself, but things that I'm really trying to, as in terms of when I'm thinking of all the eyeshadow palettes that I purchased and or own, I want to start thinking of ways to, like, rate them or things that I just, little, little, little things here that are a little bit annoying, but if they're important to you, then, you know, completely fair. So starters, one thing I would definitely say about this palette is, as you see, there is nothing on the side. A lot of eyeshadow palettes are like that. Completely fine, but, and I know it would probably cost additional money, I really do wish that brands would put it on the side, as most of us, at least for myself, do, I don't know if you can see, have like a bookshelf behind me. Maybe you can't see it, yeah. So my eyeshadow palettes are lined up. And it's difficult to be like, okay, which one is this? Especially if you have a lot of them similar. So just little random, you know, thing to be like, uh, I wish that they would change, but I wish that they would change. I, I do wish that they did have that. So another little just thing to nitpick about, I do wish that these pants were magnetic. I think that we really are getting into the day and age where a lot of people are wanting more magnetic palettes. A lot of people are wanting to buy palettes that they can be versatile with, be it traveling, or just, I think even just you want to create your own palette. I think it is a lot more fun, a lot more creative, and I think that brands really should jump in on that. You know, I, I think, uh, not to talk about another brand out of nowhere in here, but Ensley Rain is a brand that, though they are quite expensive, I am really intrigued in their palettes because not only are they beautiful, but they are also magnetic, and I don't know, I, I just, I really appreciate that. I just think it would be a great move for brands to make in the future. Sorry, that was my speaker. But one other random thing that I wanted to throw in that I really do appreciate brands that put names on each of the shades. I just do think it is super nice and helpful. One random thing that I did forget that is not on my list is I do wish that brands had shade descriptions. As far as I know, this brand does not, I'm on their site right now, so I'm going to scroll real quick. So they do have all the shades listed, which I appreciate. They do have what it is. I appreciate that. Wait, what? Oh, that's kind of weird. I just saw something that when reading, so I guess we'll just talk about it, because why not? We're here for some random times right now. One shade I would change in this palette, if I could, is the black. It is a matte duochrome. What? What? Because, like, when I'm using this, I'm like, oh, man, my shimmer's getting into my palette. I forget what we call these shades. Like, a press pigment kind of thing. You can barely, maybe, maybe. Like, you can see a hint of glitter in there. But, I mean, I'm not trying to mean, but, like, come on. Come on. You know that we don't like this. You know that. If you're going to give me a black with some duochrome, amp it up. I want it to be Glitter City on my lids. If you're wanting to give me this, I mean, it's beautiful, but you can't see that. You, you can't, I mean, maybe you can, I can't. It looks like black with a bunch of multicolored glitter in there, which is beautiful, but it's not enough. It's not strong enough. And again, I'm not a makeup company or whatever, so I have no idea how the chemistry and all of that works. But I'm just saying, give me a matte black. Don't try to be like, oh, it's a matte with duochrome. What? No. No, because most time we're just going to use it as a matte. Because the shimmer is going to disappear, which is what I've done. Anyways, as you see, because like I said, I had zero freaking ideas. So that's kind of annoying. But back into what I was saying is I wish there were shade descriptions, especially for people like myself who are colorblind, even if it just, you know, just to help you out. But I would definitely say, yeah, mainly colorblind folk like myself to be like, oh, is this green? Is this purple? Is this whatever? So I'm like, oh, I'm trying to put a look together and I want it to be cohesive, especially as a colorblind person. Like, 
thankfully I don't have this as much anymore as an adult, probably because my wardrobe is much more simple. When I was younger, oh my god, and I don't know if it's just when you're younger, but like, oh my god, I would get bullied because like, I would be like, oh, this red shirt has green, like a green stripe in it, you know, kind of find out later on it was gray. And regardless, basically, you know, because unfortunately in adult world too, people can be mean and be like, what is that on your face? So, you know, of course, wherever the hell you want to. I'm not saying like, oh, you have to go by what society says, but it is just nice sometimes to like have a look, look more cohesive. So yeah, that would be one other random thing that I do wish the brand did include. I really can tell that they did put a lot of thought into what they were writing. They did talk about how, you know, the pants are not removable. Um, they are glued into place. You know, again, bummer. I wish they were removable. But I appreciate that they do state that. I just appreciate a brand giving me some more detail about their product. But I think that is going to be it for today's video. Let me know down below what you think or how your day is going. All that fun stuff. Remember to give me a like if you do like this. I would love a subscribe if you want to join me for some more awesome content like this. Let me know down below as well. Like, what are you looking for? If you have any, like, feedback or thoughts about, you know, whatever. Um, just, you know, things, maybe, maybe things you want to see from me. I don't know. But yeah, comment. I already said that. <laughs> but comment, subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. And I will see you all on my next one. Okay, bye.